greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, good morning, everyone, and some of you, it's in the afternoon. We want to thank our God who have given us this wonderful opportunity to share the word of God. Let us pray as we share the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and moment to share your word. I pray, Father, by your spirit, everyone that hears your word of God, you may speak to them, O oh God. Those that are believers, strengthen their faith. Those that have never come to the knowledge of your truth, let them come to the knowledge of your truth. Your word says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, we want to share with you about uh, the theme is that uh, what makes the gospel the good news? What makes the gospel the good news? We want to share, uh, to speak about this, the mysteries of the gospel. What does the Bible speak about the gospel? One of uh, uh, what makes the gospel the good news? In other words, what makes our faith glorious? What makes my faith glorious? What makes me as a preacher, when I preach, I feel confident in what I'm doing? What makes you as a believer to say, wow, this is great. My faith is strong. I trust God despite everything. And uh, Paul, the apostle, one of the, one of the glorious book in the Bible in the New Testament that speaks more about the work of Christ, the work of God through Christ, is the book of Romans. The book of Romans is different from other books or the epistles written by the apostles. Some, rich, some apostles or epistles speak about the challenges, about what is happening in the churches. Other epistles write about how we should conduct ourselves. The epistles speak about how we can lead, how we can lead well in the congregation. The other epistles speak about the disciplines, what believers have not been fulfilled, what believers have been called to do. And uh, the book of Romans is the only book that does not speak about any challenge, any setbacks, but the book of Romans speak about so many things that affect every area of, li of our lives. The book of Romans speaks about the work of God. The book of Romans speaks about Jesus Christ as our Redeemer. The book of Romans speaks about the power of the law. The book of Romans speaks about the power of sin. And the book of Romans speaks about the power of grace. This is exactly, but also the book of Romans speak about, uh, about our faith. These are the themes in the book of Romans. You want to understand about God, how God so loved us, and he gave Jesus Christ as a substitute to our sin, go to the book of Romans. Do you want to see the work of Christ into our lives? Go to the book of Romans. Do you want to see how the law, what law could not do, but Christ has done it? Go to the book of Romans. Do you want to know the power of sin over lives, how Christ has overcome the power of sin? Go to the book of Romans. Do you want to know how much Christ has become our Lord? Go to the book of Romans. Do you want to know how we are set free by the power of faith, go to the book of Romans. Someone said 153 times in the book of Romans, speak about God, God. Speak about the law 72 times, Christ 65 times, sin 48 times, Lord 43 times, faith 40 times. So we want to see what makes this gospel glorious. We shall read just highlights in the book of Romans. Paul introduces himself as the born servant of Jesus Christ. Called to be an apostle, special messenger, personally chosen representative. 
set apart for preaching the gospel of salvation, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the sacred scriptures. Paul is trying to speak and make introduction of himself. He has been set apart by God himself. Listen to what the Bible says. He was chosen by God, set apart to preach the gospel, the good news of salvation, which he promised beforehand through the prophets in the sacred scriptures. Paul is speaking something very important here. The gospel is the good news. The gospel is the good news. Something very interesting as we go on, he says, the gospel is the good news of salvation. Number one, what makes this gospel glorious? Number one, it is the gospel. Number one, it is the good news of salvation, which he promised beforehand through his prophets. This gospel that Paul was preaching, it was not something new. Very interesting that uh, before even the prophets during that time, they were speaking about the good news. Talking about the Bible says concerning the son. Very interesting that many people think this gospel that we preach just came the other day. Paul is saying, no, this gospel that he was preaching, he was mandated to do, was also proclaimed, spoken about by the prophets. What did the gospel speak about? Number one, he says, it spoke about the son, the son who came in the flesh. He came and identified himself with us. That's something very interesting. What makes this gospel the good news is that God identified himself with us. God was not just outside there and he was overlooking us in our sins, but God becomes in the flesh. The Bible says he was born regarding to the descendant of David. Very interesting that God had to identify himself with us. God, in other words, he cared about us. He was born with the Virgin Mary. Very interesting, the good news is that God wants us to understand how much God loved us and he sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior. He says one or another thing. He promised before his prophets. This gospel is not new, as I said. It's not a clever invention of man. This gospel that you preach is not through man-made gospel. It came from the heart of God. And many times people say, oh, this gospel that you are preaching in Africa, this is a, a Western, a Western gospel. It's something that it came from invention of man. But let me tell you, my friend, even the gospel that you preach, in fact, it began there, but it began long, long time ago. And he says, he promised before the prophets concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The center of a gospel is centered only in the Jesus Christ as the center of our proclamation. What makes this gospel glorious is that it was spoken long time ago. It is not man-made, as we shall see. The power within the gospel is not only the power just to do something. It's the power to change our lives. He says, the gospel concerning Son Jesus Christ, this is the center of Paul's gospel. The, boss, the gospel we preach is centered only in one person, and that Jesus Christ. He says, the Jesus Christ became human at the seed of David concerning the flesh and internal existence. In other words, what the Bible speaks about, God himself, the evidence of why this gospel is so glorious, 
what makes the gospel the good news is that God, through Christ Jesus, has become in the human flesh the evidence that God loves us. He says, and therefore the Bible says, he was declared, Jesus Christ. In other words, he was saying, God cared about humanity. And he says, through him, we have received grace. This is very important. God, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, began with God, sent Jesus Christ as part of us in the human flesh. He was declared in eternal existence. And then the Bible says, through him we have received grace. Let me tell you what makes this gospel, Jesus Christ as the center of the good, glorious gospel, is one thing. Through Jesus Christ, we have received grace. Why do we receive the grace of God? In this chapter of chapter 1, he speaks about the wrath of God. In the wrath of God where men try to worship other gods other than God. Listen to what? Why do we need the grace of God? Listen to what on verse 26 says. For God, why this gospel is so glorious is that uh, on verse 23 speaks about the, 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 uh, the sinful of man. Listen to my friend, the gospel does not judge us, but the gospel speaks about our sins. Listen to what the Bible says. For God does not overlook sin, and the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their weakness suppress and stiff the truth. Why do we need the grace of God? We need the grace of God because the grace of God delivers us from the sin and the wrath of God. He says, through him we have received the grace. Through Jesus Christ, what makes the gospel, the good news is that in the wrath of God, God has offered the grace upon humanity. It is not the will of God that anyone should perish, the Bible says. Number one is that the grace of God, the goodness of God, speaks to you and me, says, I have offered Jesus Christ as my only son to deliver you from the wrath that shall be revealed to all ungodness and unrighteousness. Listen to what the Bible says. Because why? Because sin is evident. Sin is evident. Do we need the grace of God because sin is evident? He says, for God made it evident to them. For ever since the creation speaks about the, our sinfulness, how we have sinned and rejected God. We have made ourselves our God. On verse 21 says, For even though they knew God as the creator, they did not honor him as God and gave thanks for the wonderful creation. On the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking. Why do we need the grace of God? It's that because the wrath of God has been revealed, but the grace of God changes us. Listen to what the Bible says. We claim to be wise, and yet we are fools. We exchange the glory of God for majesty and excellence of the immortal God, for the image worthless in the shape of mortal man. We are so sinful. We act foolishly in our ignorance. Why do we need the grace of God? Therefore God gave them up. Listen to what Bible says in verse 24. He says, therefore, these are the consequences of our sinfulness. The consequences of the judgment of God. Well, you can say this is an old time. But let me tell you, all these things, 
are present in our times. What makes this glorious gospel so good is that even when we are wicked, even when we are sinful, even when we turn away from God, the grace of God is sufficient for us. That makes the good news the good news. 24, therefore God gave them up in the lust of their own hearts. Such impurity, the Bible says, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. Listen to what the Bible says. The gospel does not judge us. The gospel reveals to us our sinfulness. And let me tell you my preaching today is not judgmental. It is the gospel that reveals who we are. The gospel is like a mirror. It says you are sinful. You've turned away from God. By the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, the Bible says, you have received the grace of God. Let me tell you, my friend, another thing is very interesting. He says, therefore, we have made our own choice. We have made our own choices, abandoned the truth of God. 25, we have made our choice. We have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. What sad is this? Man whom God created. We have rejected, the Bible says, we have rejected the truth of God and accepted lies. Says, and they worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. These are the choices we make. We make a choice and we reject God. We make choices and we exchange truth for the lies. We, we make our choices not to worship God, but to cr worship other things. Listen to what the Bible says. Even in our choices of worship, we choose not to worship God. Even in our choices of decision, we, cho we choose lies over the truth. Another thing, my friend, why we need the grace of God is this. We have made even our choice in the way we relate to one another. The Bible speaks about very interesting word of God today. For this reason, listen to what the Bible says. And in the same way, men made their choices on verse 27. And in the same way, also men turned away from natural function of women. Men turned away from the, from the natural function. And the women also turned and were consumed with their own desire toward one another. Men with men committing sinful acts and in return receiving their own bodies inventable and appropriately penalty for their wrong things. We made even our choices in our relationship. The Bible speaks about man has decided. Man has decided. As I said, I'm not here to judge. But I'm just telling you about why we need the grace of God. The Bible says, men marrying their men. Women marrying their women. And let me tell you, my, this is a matter of choice. But God says, why have you made wrong choices? Why are you turning the natural things into the unnatural you see, the gospel is always commanding us to come. And many times we judge people. And this is exactly what is happening. The Bible speaks about this sexual uh, inappropriateness. This was happening in the times of the Romans. He was writing to people who had completely made their choices. Other than worshiping God, they worship other things. They refuse the truth and they move into lies. They make the choices in their relationship and, and they make, they decide on their own against the natural creation of God. And this is what is happening in our society today. A man chooses to marry a man, a woman chooses to marry, that is their own choices. But God says, why have you made wrong choices? You are moving against the law of my natural ways. And let me tell you, my friend, the gospel always receives us. 
No matter how bad we are, no matter how choices we've made, the Bible says through Christ Jesus, the grace has been appeared. The gospel gave. The gospel becomes the power of God. Listen to what the Bible says. And let me tell you, my friend, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto us for our salvation. Why am I saying that? There is the wrath of God. There are wrong choices that we make. But let me tell you, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God. What makes the gospel, the good news is this. The Bible speaks about this wonderful thing. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God. What makes the gospel glorious? He says, the gospel is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes Everyone who believes, everyone we need salvation of God. Paul is not saying that I'm not ashamed, I'm just, just getting ashamed. But he's speaking about something. It is the power of God. And many times we seek power. And Paul was not just saying, as someone says, power, Paul does not say that the gospel brings power. But that is in, it is the power. And God's power at that center. There's that power of the gospel within the power to change all these things that I said. It is the power that everyone needed. The gospel's power to salvation comes to everyone who believes. God will not withhold salvation from anyone who believes, but believing is the only requirement. Salvation of God has been revealed. And during that time, people needed salvation. They needed salvation. They saw salvation in other things. During that time, the Roman times, people were seeking salvation from the emperor, salvation in other things. Other people were seeking power. But Paul says, yes, I know you're seeking those kind of powers. But he says, I want to offer you something greater. The gospel is the power of God. And to salvation. Everyone is availed. Everyone is accepted. He says, this gospel crosses every culture to the Jew first and then the Gentiles. What am I saying? The gospel is available for our own salvation. And the best of all things, he says, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. The righteousness of God is is revealed what makes this glorious gospel the good news is one thing when the bible says and the righteousness of god is revealed it doesn't mean the holiness of god is revealed but something very interesting it speaks about one thing that when you come to him when you surrender everything to him when you act in faith and come to him, he declares you justified. He declares you as somebody who has never sinned. Very interesting. What makes the gospel so glorious is one thing. The gospel speaks about one thing as I'm about to finish. That in the gospel, when you come to him, to God, and understand that, that God is the author of this good news. It says, in the gospel that we hear, Jesus Christ becomes the center of the gospel and his work in us. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Simply this put it this way. The righteousness of God 
It's like coming before him and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. Do you know what happened? God accepts you. God forgives you. And then he declares you as justified. In other words, he declares you as if you have never sinned. This is what makes the gospel the good news. This righteousness of God that he speaks about is not the holy righteousness that condemns a sinner. No, it is the righteousness of God that is given to a sinner who ill comes and trusts in him. When God looks on us, <laughs> when I come to him, I say, Jesus, I have come to you. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've turned away and made wrong choices. But Lord, so Jesus Christ, receive me. And you know what happens? He justifies you. He declares you as your own, as his own. And then, my friend, God says you have been forgiven. Do you feel condemned? Do you feel rejected? Do you feel you have made wrong choices? What makes this gospel glorious is that the grace of God has been revealed through Christ. And let me tell you, he says lastly, from faith the just shall live by faith. When you come, you are saved by grace. But also, you walk this walk in faith. What makes this gospel? In our wrong choices, in our wrong decisions, when we come to him, say, Jesus, I have heard your word. I'm a sinner. The Bible says, he declares you Righteous. The Bible says from faith to faith. This faith that you start from the beginning to trust God is the faith that will carry you until the end. Inkuruziza. Chitawe chaba Roma. Jisoba nwanezi inkuruziza. Paura rasoba nwamu jitawe chaba Roma. Ijitawe chaba Roma nicho jitawe chiza chane chida soba nwa. Izindi nyandi kuzo sezin hunga zaafu gaga kubiwa sobya matorero. Uburi jugomba kuitu kwa ramo. Uburi jugomba kuyobora. Ichimani gusaba. Ningaro kazi chaha. Ari kujitabu chava roma ni jitabu chiza chana. Chigara garza umurimo guimana. Ichimani kufuga ho. Icho kristo chamu zanye. Imbaragaza zama tejeko. Imbaragazi chaha. Imbaragazu unubugimana. Imbaragazo kuizera. Ijitabu chava roma. Chijira jeza kutukwele kaneza. Ingomoko. Yubu tumabugiza. Paura avuga ngo ubutumwa bwiza bwavuzwe mbere nabahanuzi ubutumwa bwiza tuvuga ntabwo ari ubuhanuzi cyangwa ubutumwa bwiza bwatekerejwe mu ntekezo z'abantu aravuga to ya ubutumwa bwiza bwavuzwe na kera ubutumwa bwiza buhindura ubutumwa bwiza aravuga ngo ubutumwa bwiza bwavuzwe nabahanuzi bwavuze kuri Kristo Yesu Ubutumwa bwiza ni bushingiye ku ntekerezo zawe. Ubutumwa bwiza ni bushingiye mu byo nkora. Ubutumwa bwiza ni bushingiye ku mirimo yanje. Paulo avuga ngo ubutumwa bwiza bushingiye ku mwana w'Imana. Ubutumwa bwiza bwo Paulo avuga nibwo avuga ati ubutumwa bwiza muri Kristo Yesu nibwo bwazanye ubuntu bwaye. Izimbabazi 
ni kuki Paul avuga ngo ubuntu bw'Imana muzarebe neza mu hefo aravuga ati umujinya w'Imana guhitamo kwabantu guhitamo kwabantu gahitamo ikinyoma aho gukurikiza ukuri guhitamo nabi kuramya ibiremwa aho kuramya Imana aravuga ngo no guhitamo mu mibanire yacu mu buryo busanzwe aho abantu bayisemo mu bya muri ibi bihe aho umugabo yahitagamo kurongorwa nundi aravuga ati nabagore nabo bagahitamo kurongora abandi ntabwo bibiliya igeregeza kuducira urubanza muri ibi bintu no muri ibi bihe ubutumwa ndimo kubabwira sukukira abantu urubanza ariko nuko twereka yuko iri iki cyanditswe cyangwa biragerageza kutwereka ngo yewe wa mwana w'umuntu we wahisemo nabi wahisemo mu buryo bwe mibereho yawe mu buryo imana itakuremeye wahisemo nabi gukurikiza ibinyoma aho gukurikiza ukuri wahisemo nabi kuramye byaremwe aho kuramye imana aravuga ati rero niyo mpamvu imana yohereje Yesu kugira ngo atwereke ubuntu bwayo Aravuga ati niyo mpavu hafite ifunwe hafite ubwoba simfite isoni zo kuvuga ubu butumwa nko kuvuga ngo namaze kumenya yuko ubu butumwa ari imbaraga z'Imana imbaraga z'Imana zikora iki zihindura imbaraga z'Imana zihindura wa muntu Paulo aravuga ati ubu butumwa rero bwiza nibwo ngo muri yo muri ubu butumwa ni mwe imbaraga z'Imana zigaragarira naho ushaka ubura aravuga ngo muri muri ubu butumwa nibwe imbaraga z'Imana zigaragarira niyo mpamvu muri uyu muraya masaha ubutumwa bwiza nibwo bwonyine bushobora kuguhindura arongera avuga ngo mu butumwa bwiza nabwo butanga gukizwa gusa salvation ariko ngo mu butumwa bwiza ngo ni namwe gukiranuka kw'Imana kugaragarira iri jambo gukiranuka ntabwo ro kuvuga ngo y'umunyabyaha akizijwe cyangwa avuye mu byaha ngo Imana imusukaho kwera kwayo oya ni ukuvuga ngo ni jambo dikomeye cyane icyo mubera utumwa bwiza bwa inkuru nziza nuko ngo y'umuntu aje agakizwa kubwo kwizera kaza kumana kubwo kwizera ngo imana imuha imuha gukiranuka iramuvuga iti ubwuje kuri nge uyu munsi ntugiciriyeho iteka uruwanje nko kuvuga ngo ibyo urasa nkaho utigeze ukora ibyaha ubu nibwo butumwa bukomeye cyane Paulo arimo kutubwira hano ngo umuntu wese uza kumana kubwo kwizera akaza afite umutima uvuga ngo ndashaka ubutabazi ngo imana yikwakiriye tuzabibona atari bikorwa atari amategeko ari kongo yuyuje ngo imana igwa gukiranuka kwayo ngo yikubonyera kubwira ngo urababariwe na ushaka kuburaho Paul aravuga ati icyo nimo kwabwira ngo imana niyo mpamvu mwakoze guhitamo kwanyu niyo mpamvu imana izagaragaza umujinya wayo ari kwa rageza kubwira ngo nubwo imana itegura umujinya imani guya amahirwe ya kabiri na ushaka kubura wahisemo nabi wenda mitamo nabi ariko agakiza k'Imana karacyahari imani barinde kandi bafashe muhitamo neza mwemera ubutumwa bwiza mwizina rya Yesu amen